happen to have a mint tree or a mint bush like I do, it is important to cut the, the mint well. So go into your mint and take one stalk. And when you're cutting, don't cut all the way down to the bottom. Just cut like uh, about half a, about one centimeter away from the leaves because the mint will spring back up right here. All right, so you want to cut it in such a way where your mint can continue to re procreate afterwards. Procreate. <laughs> All right, so this is one piece. I'm going to go for about three to four pieces for my tea. So this is two pieces. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've washed all pieces of the mint. So now I'm going to use these three pieces. Now I'm going to use these three pieces in my tea. Now if you are like me and you like a big cup of tea, then you are going to need at least three pieces of mint the size I showed you. But if you are not like me and you like smaller cups, one or two of these can do. So in order to get the best out of the mint, it is important that you kind of break it up, like crush it and break up the pieces. That's very important, right? And then you put it in the cup. So this is what the mint looks like inside the cup. Basically, the entire bottom of the cup is covered with mint. And then you simply add some hot water. That's it. I've already boiled my water. So I'm just pouring the water on. And you do that and then you leave this to seep for about two to three minutes and voila you have the best tasting mint you will ever drink we used to okay so right now I have in front of me quarter of a cucumber Japanese cucumbers are very small so this is what it looks like I have a small bit Maybe you can say, if this could fit in a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of pineapple. But I'm going to say two, two cuts of pineapple and I have two strawberries, mostly for the color because I absolutely love color. So I'm going to, and the antioxidants that are there. So I'm just going to slice the water, not the watermelon. <laughs> I'm going to slice the cucumbers very thinly. All right. All right, then I'm going to get my pineapples thin as well because the thinner it is, the more you're able to benefit from it flavor-wise in the water. The trick with making flavored water is that the fruits have to be in The fruits have to be in the container for at least an hour. I would suggest overnight is the best time for it because that's where you get a full infusion of fruits. The red for me is just for the color. And finally for the main ingredient. This looks too long for my bottle, so I'm just going to cut a piece here. I'm going to use it, but I'm just gonna cut it so that it can fit. And then the trick to getting the flavor out of this is to ensure that you slap, that you slap it to wake it up like that. All right, one more time in slow motion. Clean up, woken up the leaves. Also, you can crush. And the final ingredient is some water. And then you put this in your refrigerator 
for overnight is the best but if you don't have that amount of time put it in your refrigerator for one to two hours and then the flavors will start to seep in So this is basically what the water looks like. A lot of people also make this kind of uh, water and they use lemon instead of pineapples. They also can use watermelon. You can just basically use any fruit you'd like and pair it with some mint and you'll have a burst of flavor. All right, so just put this in the fridge for overnight, best time. But if you're going to work, you can actually make it and take it to work with you. So this is our mint infused fruit water. Very delicious. Now that I've finished making this in the last three minutes, the tea is definitely ready. And as you can see, the leaves have turned brown. That is a testament of the heat that was applied and now you just have this and that's it finished two ways to use mint i'm going to show you a third way soon stay tuned to the mo for the mojito video